Und herzlich willkommen. Good morning and welcome to the digital annual press conference of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles. This year we're digital again, and I think we have all got used to these formats by now. But still, we of course would like to be able to welcome guests in person again soon in Hanover. Our speakers today are Carsten Intra, Chairman of the Board of Management of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, and Carsten Intra will start immediately now with his report on the current situation and the highlights of the past financial year. Some of these you have already seen in our film just now. For the first time, I would also like to welcome Michael Obrovsky to our annual press conference. He has been a member of the Brandt Board of Management for Finance and IT since July 2021. Michael Obrovsky will explain our sales and financial figures in detail. And then in the second block, we will look ahead and present the essential elements of our updated GRIP 2030 corporate strategy. And Carsten Intra will cover this. And now, without any further ado, I would like to hand over to our chairman of the board. Carsten, you have the floor. Thank you, Eric. Ladies and gentlemen, I also would like to welcome to the annual press conference of Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, wherever you are watching us from today. We are all under the impression of the war in Ukraine these days. We are all moved by the great suffering of the people in the country. Many of our employees also want to help. They want to help with donations in cash or in kind or with their own personal commitment. And it certainly is not easy to talk business against this background. But you also know that the plants of Volkswagen commercial vehicles are also directly affected by supply disruptions from key suppliers. And this once again leads to downtime in production. Today we cannot make any reliable statement really on how the situation will develop over the course of the year. But with the people in Ukraine, we share the hope that fighting will end soon and that diplomatic solutions for the region can be found. But you have dialed in today to uh, get information about the financial year of Volkswagen commercial vehicles, and this is what I'd like to provide you now with. So, ladies and gentlemen, this past year was already marked by uncertainties and we're still preoccupied with the COVID-19 situation. And this is a global pandemic that has had considerable impact for people, for companies, and there's certainly nothing good to be found in that pandemic. But there's one thing you can learn from it. We've learned that digital working has become increasingly the norm today. And that we also implemented the necessary hygiene and health protocols in the factories with a great deal of discipline. And that has managed uh, and has allowed us to continue operations largely smoothly. I would like to take this opportunity, therefore, to express my sincere thanks to our colleagues in all areas of Volkswagen commercial vehicles for their sense of responsibility, the flexibility, and also for their great commitment. Thank you very much. So, we can say 2021 was a year of new beginnings and radical change for Volkswagen commercial vehicles. It was a year with numerous challenges, uh, but in the end, we are now in a much better position in many ways than we were 12 months ago. And also, we have set an important course for the transformation of our brand. Now, for example, in the renewal of our product portfolio. Last year, we first completed the Caddy model range, and then the new Multivan celebrated its world premiere 
and uh, came to dealerships. Uh, reactions that we got in public and among our customers show that the multivan has been extremely well received. It uh, also complements the T61, which continues to be offered as a transporter and also for the time being as a California model. The demand remains very high, especially for those popular leisure models. And this trio of vans is then completed by the ID Buzz, which uh, also celebrated its world premiere just now as a fully electric vehicle and uh, uh, has been received with much acclaim. It will soon also be available in the United States. The ID Buzz, therefore, is a very important product for our brand and at the same time for the entire Volkswagen Group. And then there's also the new Amarok from the cooperation with Ford. So that's another innovation already in the starting blocks. We will present the Amarok to its fans and to the public as early as this summer already. Now for that, we have already um, made uh, changes. We have also revamped our production line here in Hanover, and that plant we're preparing uh, for the series production of the ID Buzz, and uh, also a new production facility here has now been made available for the Artemis project. These are fully electric D SUV luxury class models that we'll build for Audi and Bentley. So. We have made significant progress on our way to achieve carbon neutral production. And at the same time, we're also taking important steps towards autonomous driving with our partner Argo AI. Already today, the ID Buzz AD is driving through Munich as a test bed with Argo technology on board. Next step is going to be Hamburg. And uh, from 2025 onwards, we are planning commercial and driverless operations under the umbrella of Moya. A year ago, we presented our startup CETO to you. The market launch of CETO took place as planned in summer 2021. The solution for business customers focuses on the market of uh, very important time-critical transportation. Now, as we speak, there's already more than 200 partners registered on the platform. The turnover of CETO grows every month in the double-digit range, so this is also on schedule. For all of these assignments, we, of course, train our workforce, both in terms of using analog and digital tools, and this transformation is an enormously important part of the new corporate strategy, GRIP 2030. I will tell you more about our strategy and our mission uh, until the end of the decade, and also how we contribute to the uh, new auto group strategy, but I'll do that later in the second part of my speech. The ongoing global pandemic had a significant impact on Volkswagen commercial vehicles business. To be quite clear, our original volume planning for 2021 looked different. We had expected a better availability of uh, semiconductors and semiconductor products and uh, had also expected higher production output, of course. Thanks to really close cooperation with the Volkswagen Group and all the other brands, we have uh, managed to adapt to the situation in the best possible way. But be it as it may, we have not been able to deliver as many vehicles in 2021 as our customers would have wanted. So in the end, we ended up with around 360,000 vehicles delivered to customers under these circumstances. That is a respectable result. We increased our sales revenue despite lower deliveries. Now, here we were helped by the fact that uh, we needed no special sales incentives, no tacticals in this market because it was showing good, solid demand. And this is also backed by our incoming orders. Now, we ex exceeded our deliveries by around 100,000 orders. So that's an impressive proof of our customers' interest in our good products and at the same time of the strength of our brand. In terms of our operating profit, we had originally planned for two years of a dip in profits, uh, I told you in March 2021. So we expected a second year with a negative result because we realized that the transformation of our brand is also certainly a financial tour de force. But it was then thanks to high cost discipline and a strong team performance, many thanks to our team here, we were already able to achieve what I think is an impressive turnaround of more than half a billion euros in this past year.
So haben wir das ja wieder mit einem positiven operativen Ergebnis. So, we uh, closed the year with a positive operating profit of 73 million euros again. In fact, one year earlier than planned. Uh, and I must say, we're all very proud of that at Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles. Uh, the details of all these figures and the more uh, background on financial results will, will be given to you by our new CFO, Michael Obrovsky. And then, as I said, we'll be back later to give you an outlook on our strategic planning for the next couple of years. So with that, it's over to Michael. Yeah, vielen Dank, Carsten. Thank you very much, Carsten. Ladies and gentlemen, 2021 was a challenging year for the world economy. It was a year marked by many uncertainties, such as the ongoing COVID pandemic and also the associated supply bottlenecks, especially for semiconductors. And also that was a situation that Volkswagen commercial vehicles uh, was unable to escape. Last year, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles delivered a total of 359,500 vehicles to our customers worldwide. Deliveries, therefore, were only slightly below the level of uh, the past year. So we recorded a slight decline of 3.2%. In our largest sales region, which is Western Europe, we uh, delivered around 249,000 vehicles in what is a highly competitive market, which is about 6% fewer than in the previous year. We then recorded stronger declines in our markets, North America and Eastern Europe. Deliveries in North America amounted to 4,600 vehicles, which is almost 34% less than in the previous year. And in Eastern Europe, 30,200 vehicles, which um, is a decline of 9.4%. But compared to 2020, which already was marked by COVID-19, we were able to grow in South America, in Africa, in Asia Pacific, and in the Middle East. Around 17% in South America, with a total of 32,900 cars, and also around 17% growth in Africa, with deliveries of 9,000 vehicles. In Asia Pacific, we handed over 17,500 vehicles to customers, around 11% more than in the previous year. And finally, in the Middle East, we grew by 13% and delivered 16,600 vehicles. Now, when we look at the deliveries of our individual vehicle models, you can see here that the production of the Caddy at our plant in Poznan was particularly affected by the semiconductor supply shortages. In the city delivery van, the A segment, or well, clearly our caddy segment, we are about a quarter below the delivery figures of the previous year with 85,200 vehicles. We then delivered 45,400 vehicles of the current Amarok variant, which is currently being phased out. The sales of this pickup model in Europe ended last year, 2021. But Carsten Antra has already mentioned that uh, we are now awaiting the new Amarok with great excitement and pleasure. What was positive was the development of our T-model sales and the Crafter. The Crafter increased by around 1% to 62,300 vehicles. The T-series remained VW Commercial Vehicles' flagship model in 2021, where vehicle deliveries increased by 14.8% to 166,400 units. Demand for the California was particularly strong, deliveries rising here to 19,300 camper models, which is an increase of around 20%. In 2021 also, the seventh generation of the van was presented, the new multivan. And by the end of the year, there were already 13,500 orders in the books. Uh, for our electric models, the increase compared to 2020 was around 35%. And our latest family member, the ID Buzz, will take our brand even further down the road to electric mobility from this year. And now, let us move from uh, volume figures, sales volumes, to the uh, financial data. Carsten Intra has already explained that 2021 turned out to be better for commercial vehicles than we had originally assumed. 
Following three consecutive years of declining sales, we now achieved a sales volume growth to 9.9 uh, billion last year, which is growth of 5.9 percent. Now, very importantly, we have achieved this despite the losses in vehicle volume caused by the semiconductor supply shortages. We managed to do that because we further optimized our model mix towards higher value and higher margin models. This also has allowed us to improve our price positioning. So even in the crisis year 2021, there was solid interest in our products remaining at a high level. Uh, in fact, with a year-on-year -year increase in incoming orders of almost 20 percent. And let us now please take a look at the effects uh, this has quite specifically on our operating profit. Ladies and gentlemen, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles has achieved a turnaround of more than half a billion euros. So, after last year's loss of 454 million euros, we have now delivered an operating profit of a positive 73 million euros. One year earlier than originally planned, as we said before. So, we had announced a return to a positive result for 2022. So, we already explained this to you last year when we presented our figures. In addition to the positive effects from the model mix and uh, price, which uh, has already been mentioned, we're also able to uh, post a positive result in our books again as early as 2021, thanks to this very robust, solid cost improvement and spending discipline, and we want to grow even further. Carsten and Intro in a moment will explain the medium-term outlook for our growth path based on our updated GRIP 2030 strategy. Similar to 2020, past, the past year was also characterized by a number of uh, unplannable and scheduled events that had a direct or indirect influence on our result, but we have managed to end 2021 on a positive note. I've already shown you, told you, that a major driver of the positive development was our strongly optimized model mix. We were focusing on higher yield models, and this high demand from our customers for our vehicles also allowed us to positively adjust uh, retail tacticals. And uh, also, as we said, uh, we've seen very good cost improvements and spending discipline by the brand. Now, all of this together has uh, turned our operating profit back into the black. The used car business also developed quite favorably, and uh, it also uh, made a significant contribution to this turnaround. The shortage of new vehicles, you know, given the ongoing volatile situation in the supply of parts, in turn provided quite a boost for the used car market. And our used car business benefited from this as well, of course, because uh, for, if for no other reason than because our vehicles have a high degree of value retention. So compared to 2020, which uh, was already a good year, sales in this area increased again by 6%. So, all in all, these figures lead to a clear turnaround in return on sales. Return on sales after a negative 4.9% in 2020, it was uh, now at a positive 0.7% in 2021. Last year, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles invested almost 1.4 billion euros in the future. And this allows us to drive the transformation of our brand. Our investments in 2021 were lower than uh, in 2020 at 200 million euros. Now let's look at the production facility in Hanover at plant, plant truly embracing the future. We will continue to invest in our main plant here. We're going to further modernize it for the production of vehicles from our sister brands Audi and Bentley. These future investments strengthen the group and they also strengthen the electric premium segment. Development costs uh, at around 600 million euros and they were 400 million euros below the previous year. The main funds here went into the new multivan and the ID bus. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Despite COVID, semiconductor supply problems and the resulting decline in deliveries to customers, we achieved a positive turnaround in the operating profit of about half a billion euros. And we achieved that earlier than expected. We were also able to increase our sales revenue thanks to our model lineup and the sales mix, while at the same time we safeguarded our brand's result through solid cost improvements and spending discipline. So we have taken an important step towards achieving our strategic profitability targets. And it also means that with our GRIP 2030 strategy, our brand is fit for the future. And this is what Carsten Intra is now going to explain to you in more detail. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I think these are quite strong figures, especially when you look at the background of the general conditions of this past year. And I think they're really a good foundation for the ongoing transformation of Volkswagen commercial vehicles. So today we will talk about new ideas and also about some changes in our strategy. But most importantly, I really want to emphasize that our basic orientation remains unchanged. Why? Because it is right and because we have already successfully addressed uh, and have also successfully tackled many of those future-oriented, forward-looking tasks. And we're building on a good foundation. We know what we, the commercial vehicle guys, stand for, right? What makes us tick and how we work now and how we work in the future. We transport success, freedom and the future. It's all about inspiring our customers. We will shape the markets of tomorrow through what we offer. And we can do that because we've been doing that for seven decades and also that is going to be the secret for the next decades to come. Our products are more than just cars. They stand for an attitude to life, for a lifestyle. They move an entire society. Our customers also are often our fans. The enthusiasm, the delight for our vehicles is absolutely unique, and I notice that every day. And the, this is very important, and we need to safeguard that, make sure that this does not change for the future. And this is also what, why we've decided to keep the name of our strategy. GRIP stands for G, as in growth. So our strategy describes the opportunities up to the end of the decade, uh, and it outlines uh, where the growth pools are. R stands for responsibility. In other words, our responsibility for the environment and society. This is our way to zero. I, as in innovation, we have corporate responsibility of the Volkswagen Group for robotic vehicles and uh, for new mobility solutions, for new business concepts. And these are some of the most important and I think uh, technically most challenging topics in our industry. P means people, because the transformation of our workforce will probably be the single most important and most difficult management task for the next few years. But then we also know that the further development of our strategy is necessary because the world around us is evolving at an ever-increasing speed. Steve Jobs once said, the pace of change has never been this fast, yet it will never be this slow again. The world is changing, with us or without us. No one asks us if we want it or if we like it or not. But I think we can shape this change. We can use it for ourselves, we can leverage the opportunities arising from these changes. And we can make good use of them. And to do this, really, we need to understand the four megatrends that are most important for our business. Number one, sustainability. I think if I, there's no coincidence that the new German Minister for Economic Affairs is also the Minister for Climate Action. Sustainability has long been the focus of politics and legislation, and many of our customers are already making sustainability a very important basis or decision criteria when they purchase a product or a service. 
Number two is urbanization. More and more people are living in cities. The UN expects there will be 5 billion people living in cities by 2030, also the number of megacities is growing to more than 40 worldwide. And along with that, the demand for efficient and for clean transport is only growing. And I think our products in particular, like light commercial vehicles, are really the key to this. And number three is digitization, a very important megatrend, and artificial intelligence as well. Data and its use are the gold of our time. Because the most valuable companies in the world use business models that are data-based. Airbnb doesn't own any real estate, Uber doesn't own cars, Netflix doesn't have cables. So the pandemic has only accelerated this trend and it has shown us once again that we in Germany and uh, also at Volkswagen have, if you will, some catching up to do in terms of digitization. Number four, social change. Generations X, Y or Z see the world differently and they have completely new requirements, completely new expectations. Uh, they are, of course, our employees, but they're also our customers of the future. So we need to answer the question, what is it that our company stands for? What differentiates us? Uh, what's the meaning, the contribution of our work? What's our purpose, both for us and for society at large? And these four trends really have guided us in the further development of our strategy of uh, GRIP 2030. Uh, it addresses very important trends of our industry and also refers to our own business of light commercial vehicles. And it is very much in line with Volkswagen Group's new auto strategy. So commercial vehicles is taking responsibility here for one of the four major strategy initiatives of the group, namely new mobility services. Our GRIP 2030 strategy essentially consists of four strategic target dimensions and uh, also four fields of action. Number one is 360 degrees e-mobility. We represent sustainable products, sustainable production. So following the e-crafter, the ID Burrs will pave the way for an all-electric vehicle segment and uh, Volkswagen commercial vehicles. Its world premiere was only a few days ago, but we've seen that the worldwide interest uh, was huge before that. The ID bus stands for sustainability like no other Volkswagen commercial vehicle before, like uh, the lifestyle of what we represent. We will deliver a carbon neutral product to our customers and our supply chain and the production uh, will also be net zero in terms of carbon emissions. We also use recycled plastic and textile products in the production of the vehicle and we do not use animal leather. For the ID California, we will also offer an all-electric model for the much sought-after and lucrative leisure camping market. Uh, this is a vehicle that has been confirmed for production in December. We're all very happy about that, of course. Our target by 2030 will be that more than 55% of cars in Europe are going to be battery electric vehicles powered by green electricity. In terms of products and services, we are the leading provider of software-based mobility solutions. And also, increasingly so, we're going to offer more services for families and businesses. At Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles, we're developing an ecosystem offering a seamless customer experience across products and across services and throughout the entire life cycle for superior quality, for customer delight and for a successful business based uh, on our strong brands for us and our customers. And here really we see a fundamental change compared to what we did in the past and how we uh, sold and how we marketed our products because uh, in the present or in the past really our business model focused uh, on the purchase of a car. But in the future, it's going to be much more than that. It's going to include the use of our mobility office services across the life cycle. So we believe by 2030, this will account for the larger part of our business. Next is new business and uh, autonomous driving. Within the Volkswagen Group, Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles is the brand responsible for the development of uh, autonomous driving for mobility as a service and also for transport as a service. So we will be the first ones to put such vehicles and services on the road. 
großer Vertrauensbeweis des Konzerns. I must say this is a great sign of confidence on the part of the group, but it's a huge task for us and we will of course successfully implement this task with our strong partners. As I said before, the uh, self-driving system is already being tested now with Argo AI in Munich. And we also have all electric testing and uh, surveying vehicles that are also on the road in selected parts of Hamburg. In the first step, we're going to use our ID Buzz AD, which is going to be a vehicle that uses onboard technology equipment. Um, that's going to be a test bed. And in the next step, we will then develop an SPV, a special purpose vehicle that comes with AD functionality. We're then going to use these vehicles for our own services, based as, uh, on Moia, for instance, or we make them available to fleet operators who operate their services using our vehicles. And then finally, people and transformation, which is our fourth uh, building block. This means we shape the organization, we shape processes and culture for a future-proof Volkswagen commercial vehicles brand, which is going to be an attractive, a performance-oriented and a digital company. We're working on this transformation of Volkswagen commercial vehicles together with our strong workforce. We continue to train our employees to embrace competencies they need in the future. By the end of the decade, our organization will be well positioned with an optimum in size, it will be future proof and will have flexible structures. And we're digitizing our entire organization, our processes uh, to enable them for data driven and data enabled decisions and business models. So these four target dimensions are embedded in the Volkswagen Group's environmental mission statement, namely Volkswagen Way to Zero. This makes sustainability a linchpin of our strategy. Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles is committed to the goals of the Paris Climate Accord. By 2050, we will achieve complete net climate neutrality. So, you see that GRIP 2030 consistently continues our corporate strategy. It is the basis for our growth trajectory. And now this brings me to uh, our specific goals that we want to achieve by the end of this decade. Volkswagen commercial vehicles will gener generate an annual EBIT of more than 1 billion euros in the car business unit by the end of this decade. Return on sales is expected to be more than 5% in 2030. What's even more important, the return on investment will be at more than 20%. So we're transforming ourselves from being a return on sales company to become a return on investment company. So ROI instead of ROS. So in the important areas of autonomous driving, mass TARS, we will offer profitable services in uh, more than 50 cities in the United States and Europe by 2030. In the Chinese market, we will then also have launched our product with partners. So after these significant investments in the business field, AD, mass TAS, we're also planning to break even with our innovative offer well before 2030. Return on sales is to be more than 10%. So, these are very ambitious goals, and they are realistic from our point of view and also from the point of view of the Volkswagen Group. We have the confidence to achieve them as a brand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to the end now, and I would like to uh, sum it up again. 2021 was another challenging year, a year in which we achieved important milestones and where we also laid important foundations for our successful future. Despite the decline in sales, Volkswagen commercial vehicles achieved an impressive turnaround of more than a half billion euros, and it's now back in the black. And in fact, one year ahead of schedule. We're proud of that. We're making progress with the modernization of our plants. Hanover, for instance, is becoming a high-tech location in the global production network of Volkswagen. Thanks to a new plant agreement for Hanover and new products such as the ID bus or the so-called DSUV, and also with the vehicles from the Ford Corporation, we are ensuring that our factories are utilized. Now also the second vehicle from the alliance with Ford is already coming this year, the new Amarok. 
I've already seen and uh, I've also driven the new car, and this truly will be another vehicle that will turn our customers into fans. So, a real Volkswagen from commercial vehicles. And fans is a case in point. The ID Buzz has already had many fans ever since the concept car was unveiled first back in uh, 2017. And now after its world premiere, we're truly seeing an overwhelming positive response all over the world. Our electric van has created, if you want, a real buzz, and I'm, I'm looking forward to driving it, especially the ID Buzz AD through Hamburg, and then also to develop further mobility services together with our strong partners. And all of this taken together is the right starting position for our updated corporate strategy, GRIP 2030, which features ambitious goals. Last year I said we have a great opportunity at Volkswagen Commercial Vehicles to decisively shape the mobility of the next decade. Today I can confidently say we will decisively shape mobility with our products and services.